before John and Yoko, Charles and Diana, there were Dick and Liz. Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor were the ultimate 60s celebrity couple, movie stars who launched a very public, adulterous affair while making the cinematic disaster known as Cleopatra. The pair led an extravagant, heedless and alcohol-drenched lifestyle, trailed by paparazzi across the globe and churned out a series of mediocre films. But they also starred in an exceptionally fine one, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, adapted from Edward Elby's hit Broadway play and directed by Mike Nichols, was a breakthrough movie both cinematically and culturally. Its blistering portrayal of modern marriage as a war of attrition between two lost souls served as a bridge between Hollywood's fading studio system and the new Hollywood decade of more creative and risk-taking adult fare. Richard Burton will always be remembered as one of Britain's greatest actors, both on the stage and screen. The Hollywood star, whose romance with Elizabeth Taylor dominated the headlines, died in 1984, leaving behind an incredible legacy. Noted for his baritone voice, he established himself as a formidable Shakespearean actor in the 1950s and gave a memorable performance as Hamlet in 1964. During his life, Richard was nominated for an Academy Award seven times, but never won. Despite this, he is widely regarded as one of the finest actors of his generation. Burton wed Hollywood icon Elizabeth Taylor in 1964, and the two maintained a volatile relationship for years to come that included remarriage and two divorces. Richard Burton was born Richard Walter Jenkins on November 10, 1925 in South Wales. Jenkins, the 12th child of an impoverished coal miner, lost his mother when he was two years old. He would be taken under the wing of Philip Burton, a teacher who became the boy's guardian and introduced him to the world of theatre. Jenkins took the Burton surname and made his London acting debut as a Welsh youngster in the play The Druid's Rest. Burton earned a scholarship to attend Oxford University and later joined the British Air Force during wartime. After leaving the military in 1947, he continued his stage work and became known for his remarkable voice and oration, appearing in The Ladies Not Burning with Sir John Gielgud. Burton then made his film debut in 1949 with the production The Last Days of Dolwyn. The same year he wed actress Sybil Williams, the couple would eventually have two daughters. Though met with varying degrees of commercial and critical regard over the course of his career, Burton went on to work in more than 40 films. He entered into a contract with Fox Studios after Dolwyn and starred in My Cousin Rachel in 1952, for which he earned his first Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. The 1953 biblical story The Robe followed, for which he received an Oscar nod for Best Actor. He also had the title role in the epic Alexander the Great in 1956 and the British protest film Look Back in Anger in 1959. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Burton had continued his stage performances during this period as well, working with the Old Vic and Royal Shakespeare Companies in Britain and earning acclaim for his work on Broadway in 1960s Camelot. In the early 1960s, Burton met actress Elizabeth Taylor on the set of the multi-million dollar epic Cleopatra in 1963, for which he was hired to replace actor Stephen Boyd. Taylor said that Burton was recovering from a hangover, and because he was unable to steady his trembling hands, she held his coffee to his lips and their eyes locked. Though each was married at the time, the two embarked on a relationship that was met with scorn from traditional institutions that included the Vatican. The couple's romantic tribulations and luxury item escapades would be covered in tabloid news for years to come. After Burton and Taylor divorced their respective spouses, the couple wed on March the 15th, 1964. 
They went on to work in 11 films together, including screen adaptations of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in 1966 and The Taming of the Shrew in 1967. Woolf earned both actors Oscar nominations, for which Taylor won. The couple earned millions from their film roles. During this period, Burton appeared once again on Broadway in a 1964 staging of Hamlet directed by Gielgud and continued to maintain distinctive projects, garnering additional lead actor Oscar nominations for In Beckett in 1964, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold in 1965, and Anne of the Thousand Days in 1969. Burton continued to drink heavily. His marriage to Taylor was noted for its volatility and storminess, with both performers battling substance addictions. The two were estranged in 1970 and divorced in 1974. They then reconciled and remarried in the fall of 1975 in Botswana, only to divorce again the following year. Burton would marry model Susie Hunt in 1976. Burton continued to make films in the 1970s, including Villain in 1971, Brief Encounter in 1975, and Exorcist II, The Heretic in 1977, and was nominated for his seventh Oscar for his role as a psychiatrist in the 1977 drama Equus. In 1980, Burton returned to the New York stage in a revival of Camelot, though his performance would later be curtailed due to the effects of medication for spinal pain. He eventually left the play to have surgery. Then, in 1983, he and Taylor returned to working together for the Noel Coward theatrical work Private Lives. Burton's final film was 1984, an adaptation of the George Orwell classic. Burton died on August 5, 1984, at the age of 58 from a brain hemorrhage in his Switzerland home. He was survived by Sally Hay Burton, his fourth wife, who had continued to manage the estate. Burton also had four children. He had two daughters, Kate and Jessica, from his marriage to Sybil Christopher, and Burton later adopted Taylor's daughter, Elizabeth Liza Todd, and he and Taylor adopted another daughter, Maria, together. Several books have chronicled Burton's life, including the Richard Burton Diaries published in 2012, which collects journal entries and notes kept by the actor throughout the years. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favourite Richard Burton movie that you like the most, or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.